In the late 21st century, the outbreak of a deadly virus left the population on Earth less than 2 million, and those who survived became blind. Centuries later, vision became a legendary existence. Even discussing the concept of sight was considered evil and would be hunted down. A group of the world's most powerful ruling legions arrived at the foot of a mountain. Their purpose on this journey was to hunt down the fugitives. At this moment, the village on the mountaintop sensed the danger. Under the command of their leader, Baba Voss, all the warriors mobilized, with the protection of their homeland as their top priority. Each person received a blade and put on a specially made helmet, and in the next second they stepped onto the battlefield. Although the people in this world lacked the ability to see, some individuals acquired different forms of evolution. The sniffer could smell people or objects from miles away. The listener could determine the distance between enemies and allies. The perceiver could sense the emotions and intentions of the enemy and anticipate their plans. After receiving reliable information, Baba Voss blew the horn. Meanwhile, Baba Voss's wife, Magra, was about to give birth. When she heard the horn of slaughter, she began to worry about her husband's safety. The highest-ranking perceiver, Paris, comforted her, advising her that the most important thing was to give birth to the child. The witchfinders were quietly approaching, and everyone held their breath, neither side daring to expose their positions. Although they lacked the ability to see, their acute hearing allowed them to sense that the enemy was within arm's reach. At Baba Voss's command, they launched an assault and everyone sprang into action. Standing at a higher position, they began their attack, and the witch finders below started to fall one by one. Just when it seemed impossible to break through, the enemy suddenly fell silent. The quietness made everyone even more cautious. The enemy threw out an iron hook, and with one move, a large number of witch hunters climbed up along the rope, inevitably leading to a fierce battle. Such a battle relied entirely on hearing and luck as a moment of carelessness could result in instant death. The enemy gradually gained the upper hand by using ladders, and in the midst of the fight, Baba Voss felt the presence of a ladder. Feeling that the odds of winning were low, he urgently ordered a retreat. He cut through a preset stone wall trap and massive boulders rolled down, annihilating the enemy and ending the battle. When everything returned to calm, Perceiver informed Baba Voss that there were still a large number of horses miles away, and the previous battle was merely a prelude. Now that the final defense had been lost, Baba Voss ordered everyone to retreat back to the village. Magra had successfully given birth unexpectedly to a pair of twins. After the joy, Paris asked Magra with seriousness, Who is the father of the children? As it turned out, Paris sensed that the enemy's target was Magra, because Magra had a connection with the fugitive. And Paris guessed that the fugitive was the father of the children. And Magra was already pregnant before she and Baba Voss became a couple. Magra no longer concealed the truth and admitted that the fugitive was indeed the father of the children. At this moment, the warriors returned to the village, and Baba Voss instructed everyone to rearrange the traps, preparing for the next big battle. He went to the cave to visit his newly born wife and adorable twin children. Even though they were not his own blood, Baba Voss still showed deep love and care. Down the mountain, the hunter Tamakti Jun had learned from the traitor that Magra might be connected to the fugitive and was about to give birth to the fugitive's child. Everyone, however, blocked the door, demanding that he hand over his wife. Baba Voss faced the betrayal of everyone without any fear. He made it clear that if anyone dared to take another step, they would have no way back, assuming a fighting stance. The invading witch hunters were about to attack the mountaintop. Their goal was to seize Baba Voss's wife and the villagers forced Baba Voss to hand her over. Some of his followers stepped forward to support Baba Voss. At this moment, Perceiver Paris informed everyone, if Baba Voss handed over his wife, the witch hunters would not spare any lives. Now the only choice was to go to the back mountain, 
where there was a suspension bridge to escape. The people did not believe Paris's words. Sensing their doubts, Paris had no choice but to reveal the truth. There was a fugitive who secretly built the suspension bridge for the village. This fugitive's name was Gerla Marl, the former husband of Baba Voss's wife and the biological father of the twins. In this world of the blind, there actually existed someone with sight. Paris led the villagers forward, groping their way through the forest until they finally reached the suspension bridge. Baba Voss stayed behind, commanding the villagers to cross the bridge in an orderly manner. At this moment, the witch hunter's vicious dogs arrived first. Temecti June dismounted and followed the barking to the front of the suspension bridge. He stopped his actions thinking that there was a cliff ahead. But the cries of the babies made him realize that there must be a suspension bridge in front of him. He felt his way to the bridge's rope. He pushed the traitor out, allowing him to test the safety of the suspension bridge first. At this moment, Baba Voss swung his sword and cut down the suspension bridge. When he was about to strike again, the traitor stopped Baba Voss's movement. However, Baba Voss did not know that the traitor had already betrayed the village, so he snapped his fingers and led the traitor to pass through. Immediately after, Baba Voss severed the last suspension rope, and the screams of his subordinates made Tamakti June realize the failure of the operation. He immediately ordered his followers to bring out a messenger to inform the queen of everything that had happened here. The messenger flew to the Dam of Canthos. At that moment, Queen Cain was listening to music her eyes vacant. She wanted to have a prayer, and with the final Amen, she ended her prayer. At this time, the messenger brought the clue from Tamakti June. She took the delivered information, felt it for a while, and then called for a meeting. Everyone gathered in the candlelit chamber hall, and the queen told them, a fugitive named Gerla Morel has appeared and given birth to two children. The fugitive is an evil character with sight, and she warned everyone not to forget that it was the light of evil that destroyed the world, and there must be no light in this world. She then instructed her subordinates to capture Jurlamaral and his children at any cost. Baba Voss followed Jurlamaral's guidance all the way, and finally, they arrived at a waterfall along a river. Here, there was the last clue left by Jurlamaral. Baba Voss took the lead and descended safely down the ladder. Everyone arrived at a plain surrounded by mountains and the fertile land made them very happy. Paris reminded Baba Voss that the witch hunters would never let them go, and Baba Voss knew how ruthless Queen Cain could be. He returned to the waterfall and dismantled the ladder, holding the twins and feeling the warmth of the sunlight. In his heart, he had already made a vow to protect his family. Based on the information left behind by Gerla Merrill, Baba Voss ventured into the dense forest with the children. He stopped by a big tree, just as Baba Voss was deciphering the messages left on the tree. The sudden appearance of a black bear caught Baba Voss off guard, and he quickly climbed up a slope. The black bear approached Baba Voss's position, searching for the traces of its prey. A cry exposed the child, and Baba Voss tried various sounds to get the bear's attention, but it was no use. Baba Voss grabbed a broken branch and struck the bear directly. An arrow flew and hit the black bear, and Baba Voss quickly checked on the child. The person who arrived was Gerla Morel. He told Baba Voss that he came to entrust him with the task of taking care of the child. He gave names to the children, one called Haniwa and the other called Kofun. He handed Baba Voss a key, which could open a box containing gifts for the child. He asked Baba Voss to give them to the children when they turned 12. Baba Voss asked what was inside the box, and Gerla Morel replied, Knowledge. Gerla Morel stood up and left. Baba Voss went to where Gerla Morel said the box was hidden. He climbed up and soon found the hidden box. After returning, Baba Voss and his wife decided to open the box. The first thing they touched was a sailboat, thinking it was a toy. At that moment, Paris arrived, and Gerla Morel insisted that Baba Voss must involve her in this matter. Next. They touched many books, but they mistook them for tree bark. Excitedly, Paris told them that these were called knowledge. The key to unlocking a new world. To understand the contents of the books, one needed the gift of sight. To prevent those with this ability from gaining knowledge, the witch finder burned all known books. Therefore, the contents of the box were extremely precious. 
Magra listened unhappily, believing that the children would not possess vision and did not want them to have it. In this world, having sight meant death and being hunted down as fugitives by the witchfinders. In the end, they decided to hide the box for now and make plans in 12 years. Paris sensed someone else in the room and signaled Baba Voss with sign language. Baba Voss searched with a knife, but the intruder had disappeared into the shadows. The traitor was calling for the shadow warriors. Turns out, a few days ago, the traitor and his aunt found a shadow in the dense forest. They told the shadow warriors that Baba Voss was extremely cruel and had killed his own mother. They requested the shadow, who possessed invisibility, to gather information about the children. The shadow warrior agreed on the spot. The shadow warrior placed the information on the traitor's neck and quickly left. Ant listened and believed the information was useless. While the traitor pulled out a bottle and told Ant that it contained the location of the village and a warning about the presence of witches. He would throw two bottles every day and eventually someone nearby would definitely find them. Baba Voss suspected Quinn Gear and the shadows were involved and warned him not to violate village rules. For 17 years, Tamakti June searched countless villages but made no progress or findings. Queen Kane, who was playing with birds, heard footsteps and knew it was Tamakti June. Tamakti June presented offerings and taxes, requesting permission from Kane to retire. In these 17 years, Tamakti June failed to capture Jerla Morel, and Kane believed that Tamakti June's behavior should be punished by death. Tamakti June didn't defend himself and accepted the punishment calmly. He begged Kane not to push him towards the guillotine but to let him end his life in his own way. Tamakti June kissed Kane one last time and left sadly. In the quiet night, Baba Voss sat alone by the campfire. Memory slowly surfaced, remembering when Magra discovered that their child could see things at the age of three, they were both scared and amazed. Paris comforted her and then called for Baba Voss. The three of them agreed that they should educate the children to conceal their ability to see. The children would lie in their mother's arms, listening to stories, playing games with their father, and learning skills from Paris. Time quickly passed, and it was the twins' twelfth birthday. Paris found Magra, wanting to give the box to the children. However, Magra opposed it, fearing that the children knowing too much would be dangerous. She only wanted the children to grow up healthy and safe. But Paris disagreed with Magra. She secretly took the two children to a room without telling Baba Voss and revealed the secret about the box and their biological father, Jerla Marl. Kofun couldn't accept it and ran out, while Hanua calmly discussed with him. The two of them reconsidered Paris' words. This conversation between the two children happened to be overheard by Baba Voss, who happened to pass by. He didn't blame Paris for her actions. The children would eventually learn about their origins. Paris approached Baba Voss slowly, sensing his sadness and comforted his emotions. The knowledge that Haniwa and Kofun gained in these five years is the power to change the world. One day they will leave this village and explore a broader world. As parents, they should feel happy rather than sad. Baba Voss fell into deep contemplation after hearing this. Haniwa and Kofun climbed to a high place as usual and began studying. Meanwhile, in a village not far away, a farmer was washing clothes when she suddenly felt something 